Sure. Good afternoon, everyone. Bonjour, and welcome to the beautiful neighborhood of Willowdale. As you can see, we've arranged uh, the perfect weather for our special guests this afternoon, and I'd like to thank you for joining me in my neighborhood. Uh, welcome to our distinguished guests who are here in Willowdale to make a very important announcement in support of French language public education that will be a long-term benefit to schools just like Monseigneur de Charbonnel Catholic High School. I'm honored to have with me today uh, Minister Lecce, the Minister of Education, along with Ross Romano, Minister of Colleges and Universities, as well as the Parliamentary Assistant to the Minister of Education, Sam Oosterhoff. I'd also like to welcome Yves Levesque, Association Franco-Ontarienne de Conseil Scolaire Catholique, as well as Isabelle Girard from the Association de Conseil Scolaire des Écoles Publiques de l'Ontario. We're also honored today to have members of the French Catholic School Board, Melinda Chartrand, Chair, Anne Gobu, Vice Chair, and Gina Kozak, Superintendent. A very well welcome, warm welcome to all of you. Bienvenue à Willowdale. French education in a bilingual country is a necessity if the language is to survive. It's good for unity, it adds to our diversity, it respects religious rights and freedoms, and it provides choice for parents and children. My wife teaches special education in the Catholic Board, and I, I'm in awe of her dedication, uh, as, as seen by her colleagues as well, that they demonstrate every single day. In fact, my uh, niece and my nephews go to St. Cyril Catholic, not too far from here, and so I know firsthand the incredible work that goes on behind the scenes to make the education they receive world class. Willowdale has seen incredible growth in recent years, with condos being built up and down the Young Street corridor, and in fact, Willowdale has hit its provincial growth targets for 2041, and it did that several years ago. That's why investments like the ones being announced today are so crucial for the people of this community in Willowdale, not just for today, but for many generations to come. Now I'd like to invite Minister Lachey to give us more details on this great news announcement. Merci beaucoup. Bonjour tout le monde. It's a pleasure to be here today. I want to first off thank my friend and colleague Stan Cho, who has been an incredible advocate for the next generation here in Willowdale. I uh, was partnered and excited to work with him on improving our schools in uh, the area of Toronto. And of course, à la Conseil scolaire catholique Mon Avenir for hosting us here today and for their exceptional leadership in providing French language education to students across our province. My thanks as well to Minister Romano for being here and for his incredible work and partnership on this strategy. And I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the efforts of Minister Mulroney, who has been in constant in support of the Francophone community in Ontario and key to today's announcement. And I also want to give a special shout out to the parliamentary assistant, um, Sam Ustroff, for his incredible leadership on getting this project done and shepherding it through multiple ministries in the government. Sam has been a steadfast advocate for French language education on Ontario and an important part of today's announcement, and he will be tapped as my French tutor going forward. I want to acknowledge many representatives from colleagues across uh, the community, l'Association d'un Consulat Scolaire des Écoles Publiques de l'Ontario, l'Association Franco-Ontarienne des Conseils Scolaires Catholiques, and members of le Conseil Scolaire Catholique Mon Avenir. Notre gouvernement sait que l'éducation en langue française en Ontario est essentielle à la prospérité de notre province aujourd'hui et à long terme. French language education is also the cornerstone of the Franco community here in Ontario. The reality is that our province has experienced and continues to experience an insufficient supply of qualified teachers in the French language education system. It is predicted that the demand for French language teachers in Ontario will only continue to grow over the next five years and that we will continue to face shortages. English language boards are also facing challenges with their programs due to the growing popularity of the French second language and French immersion programs. 
And unlike the previous government, we are acting to meet the clear needs and fix a decade-long shortage here in Ontario, and to be fair, a challenge right across this country. Rather than a patchwork of efforts, we are implementing a comprehensive strategy that will meet, uh, protect, and retain French language education in our province for the long term. It's why we've been working closely with our education sector partners over the past year, so that we can attract the best and the brightest from Canada and around the world. I want to thank Denis Chatron from ECPO, Johanne Lacombe from uh, AFOSCSC, and Anne Vinibroy of AFO for their commitments to this important work. It goes without saying that we would not be here today without all of the months of hard work of these many partners who are committed to the French language preservation in Ontario. In consultation with the working group on teacher shortages in French language school system, we have developed a comprehensive plan to recruit, retain and train French language teachers in this province. And I'm proud to announce Ontario's new four-year strategy to recruit and retain the best French language educators in this country. Aujourd'hui, je suis fier de lancer la nouvelle stratégie quadrielle ontarienne visant le recrutement et la retention dans milieu enseignant et enseignantes au Canada. The strategy will build awareness of teaching pathways in order to recruit and retain qualified teachers from French-speaking countries and to promote pathways to teacher training programs for high school students. We will remove the barriers to teacher training programs by modernizing the admission process and inv inviting English language faculties of education to respond to a call for proposals for funding that is flexible and targeted for French as a second language programs and services. We're exploring other ways to increase the number of French as a second language teacher candidates within this province as well. We're improving the flexibility of teacher training programs by working with French language faculties of education to develop and deliver flexible multi-session programs and teaching practicum. As well, ensuring supportive teaching environments through continued support for the implementation of key actions under Ontario's action plan to address systemic racism in schools and the development of supplementary resources for internationally educated teachers in the new teacher induction program manual. Through the strategy, with funding of more than $12 million, our government aims to increase the number of French teachers to ensure our students are receiving the high quality French education they deserve and that our province needs. We'll continue to look for ways to modernize the French language and the FSL teacher training programs and reduce barriers for enrollment and for hiring with an initial focus on increasing enrollment in candidates for elementary schools. We'll also invite French language faculties to respond to a call for proposals to fund the delivery of flexible and targeted programming to help increase the pool of FSL teachers for elementary schools. This government remains committed to the success of all students, including students from French language school boards and in FSL programs within our English language school boards. We know more French language teachers means more opportunities for our children to learn French, whether or not they live in a French-speaking household. This is valuable for students in their careers, in their, in their lives, and giving them a competitive advantage as they look beyond our high school system. It's crucial for cultural understanding and part of how we ensure a strong Francophone community remains in this province. Today's announcement is an important step forward and we will continue to work with all members of the French language and FSL communities, including post-secondary institutions and school boards, and my colleague and the Minister of Colleges and Universities and the Minister of Francophone Affairs to maximize the success of our new strategy and to seek pathways to success together. Thank you again for joining me today. I now would like to turn it over to Minister Ross Romano. Merci. <clears throat> thank you, uh, thank you very much, merci beaucoup, Minister uh, Lecce. I'm uh, very uh, happy to be joining you here today for a uh, very exciting announcement. And uh, today's announcement is uh, one that we're all very proud to be joining you with. Uh, very happy to be here with Minister Lecce as well as Parliamentary Assistant Oosterhof. And of course, our local hero here, uh, MPP Cho, thanks so much for having us and uh, uh, having us in uh, your riding. It is such a beautiful day. It's such a gorgeous day and it's the afternoon on a Thursday. So I want to try to get to the point as quickly as I can for you. It is very important that we recognize uh, the, the critical importance of Francophone education 
here in our province and ensure that we recognize the importance of a Jewish social and our cultural fabric and as well to our economic development. It's so important that we continue to support our Francophonie here within the province of Ontario and ensure that we do everything in our power to ensure that we have the teachers to teach across the province. It's so important to consider the fact that only a few years ago I recall conversations about trying to ensure that our province had the first university by and for Francophones and we were able to deliver on that through the University of de l'Ontario Francais and now we have a second independent Francophone University just recently passed recent legislation under the University of Hearst. And I know, as Minister Lecce has just pointed out and outlined, the government is taking significant and concrete steps to recruit, to train, but to hold on to. We want to retain our French teachers here in the province. We want to ensure that they're providing the best, highest quality education to students across the province, both in our French as a second language as well as, well as our primary French language instructors. Some of the things that we are doing, some of the concrete steps that we are going to take to help to ensure that we address the gap that exists currently within our Francophone teachers here in the province of Ontario is doing things like launching a challenge fund, which are going to incentivize post-secondary institutions to create better training op options for those individuals looking to start school as a French teacher. We are incentivizing institutions like Laurentian University and the University of Ottawa as well as the Université de l'Ontario Francais, two of our French language teachers colleges to build more virtual learning and training opportunities for educators across our province. And we are supporting the laddering of skills by creating accreditation pathways for 480 students presently working under letters of permission by working and on leveraging the things that we have already built through micro-credentialing and these types of laddering opportunities, we'll, we will ensure that these 480 students get the pathways that they need to be accredited as Francophone teachers in this province. Overall, these steps and others are ways to reduce barriers, increase enrollment to prospective Francophone language, elementary and secondary school teachers, and to support their successful transition into the workforce. These actions that we are taking through this new strategy will be key to ensuring strong and vibrant Francophone communities across this province for many years to come and are going to promote Ontario's bilingual workforce as a key economic driver. We will continue to take the necessary steps to strengthen the vitality of our Francophone community by providing better French language services and enhanced quality post-secondary education in French. Supporting our French speakers so that they can fully contribute to the prosperity of our province will not only benefit our francophone community but ontario as a whole very very happy to be able to be a part of this today uh, very happy to support minister lecce and pa uh, pa oosterhof on this initiative and uh, with that i will now pass it to mr parliamentary assistant oosterhof to say a few words thank you very much Merci, bonjour tout le monde, bon après-midi. En tant qu'adjoint parlementaire au ministre de l'Éducation, je suis très heureux de me trouver ici parmi vous à l'occasion de cette annonce. Je souhaite réaffirmer l'engagement de notre gouvernement envers l'éducation en langue française dans notre province. Chaque famille francophone de la province devrait se sentir soutenue lorsqu'il s'agit de l'accès de son enfant à une éducation de qualité. Je tiens à vous assurer que notre gouvernement entend vos préoccupations et que nous sommes déterminés à veiller à ce que les élèves des conseils scolaires de langue française aient toutes les chances de réussir. L'annonce d'aujourd'hui est le fruit d'une excellente collaboration avec nos éminents associations des conseillers scolaires, les facultés d'éducation en langue française, l'Ordre des enseignantes et des enseignants de l'Ontario, et mes collègues, les ministres Caroline Mulroney et Ross Romano, sous la direction du ministre Stephen Lecce. Il s'agit d'un problème très complexe et à multiples facettes. L'annonce d'aujourd'hui souligne l'engagement de notre gouvernement qui est déterminé à renforcer l'éducation en langue française au moyen d'une nouvelle stratégie quadriennale de recrutement, de formation et de rétention d'un plus grand nombre des enseignants 
et enseignants de langue française. Notre nouvelle stratégie quadriennale visera à mieux faire connaître les parcours d'enseignants enseignement, afin de recruter et de retenir des enseignants qualifiés venant de pays francophones et de promouvoir auprès des élèves de secondaire le parcours vers le programme de formation à l'enseignement. Notre stratégie visera également à éliminer les obstacles au programme de formation et à l'enseignement en modernisant la procédure d'admission, en invitant les facultés d'éducation en langue anglaise à soumettre des propositions pour obtenir un financement concernant les prestations des programmes et services souples et cibles pour l'enseignement du français langue seconde. Et en considérant d'autres moyens d'augmenter le nombre de candidats et candidates de l'enseignement du français langue seconde en Ontario. Notre stratégie visera aussi à assouplir les programmes de formation à l'enseignement. Et pour cela, nous travaillons avec les facultés d'éducation en langue française pour élaborer et offrir une plusieurs parties de programmes et de stages souples. Enfin, notre stratégie visera également à créer des environnements qui soutiennent l'enseignement. Et pour cela, nous appuierons la mise en œuvre des mesures clés du plan d'action en terrain de lutte contre le racisme systémique dans les écoles ainsi que l'élaboration de ressources supplémentaires destinées aux enseignants formés à l'étranger qui seront intégrés dans le pro, de la guide de programme d'insertion professionnelle de nouveaux personnels enseignants. Les efforts que nous déployons visant tous les élèves de l'Ontario qui reçoivent un enseignement en français dans les systèmes scolaires de langue anglaise et de langue française. L'annonce d'aujourd'hui est, est un important pas en avant. Nous continuerons de travailler en étroite collaboration avec nos partenaires pour optimiser les succès de notre nouvelle stratégie et pour trouver ensemble de nouvelles voies de réussite. Comme je l'ai souvent mentionné dans le passé, la langue et la culture française en Ontario me tiennent très à cœur. Je ne suis pas francophone, mais je suis vraiment francophile. Je suis donc ravi de me trouver ici parmi vous pour le lancement de cette nouvelle stratégie qui, au cours des prochaines années, verra à la continuité de l'accès à une éducation en langue française de haute qualité au sein du système d'éducation financé par les fonds publics en Ontario. Merci beaucoup. Maintenant, je m'excuse, Jackie à le podium Isabelle Gérard. Bonjour à toutes et à tous. Merci, Monsieur le député Oosteroff, pour cette présentation et surtout pour votre engagement envers les écoles de langue française. Merci, Monsieur le député Cho, de nous accueillir dans votre circonscription et Madame Melinda Chartrand de nous accueillir dans votre école. Je peux vous dire qu'au nom du président de l'Association des conseils scolaires des écoles publiques de l'Ontario, Denis Chartrand, c'est un plaisir pour nous de participer à cette annonce que nous attendions avec impatience. It has to be said, to cater to a minority population generates a wide array of additional challenges that can only be overcome through dedication, talent, innovation, and passion. This is why, when it comes to French language education, whether in the public or the Catholic system, teachers, education workers, school board staff, school board trustees, all have one thing in common. They are incredibly proud and fiercely protective of the high quality of education they provide to their students. As a result, When AIFO, the union that represents Frank language teachers, asked to create a joint working group to work together 
with the two trustees association and the Ministry of Education to provide recommendations to alleviate the teacher shortage, which is the one issue that is putting at risk the quality of our education. All groups set aside their differences to collaborate for the common good of students and families in French language schools across Ontario. A very thorough report with 37 recommendations was submitted to the Minister of Education, who in turn collaborated with the Minister of Colleges and Universities of Francophone Affairs and the Treasury Board to make today's announcement possible. J'aimerais en profiter pour remercier tout particulièrement le ministre Stephen Lecce et son adjoint parlementaire Sam Mousterov d'avoir répondu à notre appel en mettant en œuvre cette stratégie. Sans oublier la ministre Caroline Maroney et le ministre Peter Bedenfalvi pour leur précieux appui dans ce dossier. Now, we still need to find out in greater details what this strategy entails and ensure its successful implementation. As the Executive Director of the Association of French Language Public School Boards of Ontario, I remain hopeful that the strong level of collaboration demonstrated by all partners throughout this initiative will continue to grow to ensure that French language education remains a vibrant learning environment for all of our children. Merci de votre attention. Et maintenant, il me fait plaisir de vous présenter Yves Lévesque, directeur général de l'AFOCSC. Merci beaucoup, Madame Gérard. Bonjour à tous et bienvenue ici euh, à l'école de Monseigneur de Charbonnel. Monsieur le député Chaud, merci beaucoup. Monsieur le ministre Lecce, merci beaucoup. Monsieur le ministre Romano, bienvenue chez nous. Et monsieur l'adjoint parlementaire Osteroff, bienvenue. Bonjour. Merci aussi, Madame Chartrand, de nous recevoir à votre conseil scolaire. Veuillez accepter les salutations les plus distinguées de la présidente de notre association, euh, Madame Joanne Lacombe, qui ne pouvait être des nôtres aujourd'hui. Un grand merci au conseil scolaire, comme je l'ai mentionné, et à son équipe qui nous accueille aujourd'hui à l'école secondaire catholique Monseigneur de Charbonnel. C'est une bonne nouvelle que le gouvernement ait décidé de s'attaquer à la situation critique de la pénurie des enseignants et des enseignantes. C'est un problème systémique sérieux qui affecte nos écoles et la qualité de l'enseignement. La mise en place de plusieurs des recommandations du rapport du groupe d'experts, composé de membres de l'AEFO, de la CEPO et de la FOCSC, ainsi que des membres du ministère de l'Éducation, fera en sorte que l'on pourra s'attaquer activement à réduire la pression. Cette annonce est un bon départ. Il y aura beaucoup de travail à accomplir, une foule de, une foule de détails à finaliser prochainement. Nos conseils scolaires et la FOCSC seront présents au sein du nouveau groupe de travail qui sera formé pour améliorer le recrutement, la formation et la rétention du personnel, avec l'objectif de rehausser toujours la qualité de l'enseignement pour tous nos élèves francophones en Ontario. Mr. Litchie, Mr. Romano, P.A. Ostroff, thank you very much for supporting this much-needed long-term initiative. Je cède maintenant la parole à la présidente du conseil scolaire Mon Avenir, qui est aussi vice-présidente de l'Association des conseils scolaires francophones de l'Ontario, catholique de l'Ontario, Madame Melinda Chartrand. Melinda? Merci, Monsieur Lévesque, chers invités, dear guests. So it is always a pleasure to welcome you here at École catholique Monseigneur de Chabonnet. That also includes our board office uh, on the third floor and in the back. Thank you, Minister, for your announcement today. We are pleased to hear that our government has recognized that there is a significant shortage of French teaching staff, particularly in the French language education system. Conseil scolaire catholique Mon Avenir 
looks forward to working with you in this new strategy to recruit, train, and retain more French language teachers. Comme tous les autres conseils scolaires de langue française de la province, le Conseil scolaire catholique Mon Avenir fait face à une pénurie d'enseignants depuis plusieurs années. Notre système scolaire est en croissance et nous accueillons de plus en plus d'élèves issus de la francophonie d'ici et d'ailleurs. Nous avons besoin de plus d'enseignantes et ainsi le temps presse pour développer ces compétences. For those considering, considering a career in education, there are promising opportunities in the French language school boards of Ontario. Today's announcement is a concrete step to ensure that French language school boards, such, a, such as Conseil scolaire catholique Mon Avenir, may continue to meet the demands of its ever-growing student population. Thank you all, merci et bonne journée à tous. I now invite Minister Lecce back to the podium. All right. Just give me a second. Okay. We'll go to the floor first for questions before going to the teleconference line. Just a reminder one question and one follow-up. First question. Hello, Jamie with City TV, Minister. Um, first of all, we didn't hear a dollar amount. Did you have a dollar amount for this announcement? Sure. And my first question is going to be, the, 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 there's a school board that's working, or sorry, a, a school labor um, negotiations are going on, and the school, the Catholic, the Catholic, uh, there is a, a union that is working to rule right now, and that's prohibiting um, any of their, their students from graduating or having a graduation ceremony. Let me make that clear. Jamie, do you want to just say that one more time? I just, I couldn't hear the question fully. Okay. Sorry no, about There's that. A, um, a labor action going on right now uh, that is prohibiting schools yes. uh, from having graduation ceremonies because it's a part of a work to rule campaign. Um, students have been under a, a, a lot of stress. Is this yeah. appropriate? Is this uh, the graduation ceremony? Is that a, a bargaining chip? Yeah. Look, the, what's taking place in Toronto Catholic, I think, is absolutely unacceptable. Uh, children in this province have done exceptionally well this year, really overcoming incredible adversity. The least we can do is move mountains to celebrate these kids who deserve it. And I find it most disturbing and most concerning that the union would direct their members to not in any way participate in end of year celebrations for students, which thus may undermine the ability for school boards to hold these very celebrations. Uh, that's just not right. I mean, look, you know, the local union has a dispute with their school board. Collective bargaining will prevail, but I'm asking them to please, in the most exceptional year perhaps of a generation, do what's right for kids and help these children celebrate their success by being there for them and attending and supporting the implementation of graduation events. It's, it's I think, the least we can do as a province to honour the children of this, of this province who've been exceptional and who really deserve our praise. The, sec oops, sorry. the second question, we're in a period of reconciliation right now um, with the discovery of the unmarked graves. We realize that the history as, as known or as being taught is, is not correct. Right. As a Minister of Education, what are you doing to correct that history and, f and make it full history? Also, in the history of Canada, Indigenous languages are as significant as any language. What are you, what's the Ministry of Education doing to uh, include Indigenous studies and Indigenous languages? Yeah. Uh, first off, um, you know, I appreciate this question. Uh, Minister Rickford and likewise the Premier have announced a $10 million investment most recently uh, to help uh, discover uh, potential graves at residential schools in the province of Ontario, which I think is very appropriate uh, given the very dark chapter in Canadian history that requires us to remember uh, and as well to ensure we learn from this history. In Ontario's education curriculum between grade four and eight, as well as in grade 10, there is currently mandatory learning with respect to First Nation, Indigenous, Métis, and Inuit history and studies. Uh, but I appreciate 
uh, for some months now. Strengthen the curriculum to improve upon what is in it and strengthen the mandatory learning when it comes to the history uh, that. Uh, and I will just confirm that we're going to continue those discussions with stakeholders, particularly First Nation elders and leaders, on ways to do it because uh, going forward. And now we'll go to the phone lines for questions. First question from the phones. Thank you. Um, that question. Mr. Lecture, I wanted to ask about plans for schools in the fall. Sure. And in particular for high school. Um, I'm just wondering why the ministry is asking boards to keep teens cohorted in quadmesters or modified semesters, given that the teenagers and the teachers will be vaccinated. Sure. Um, so why are you doing, directing this? Well, to be clear, we provided direction back in May based on the public health indicators and the environment at the time with respect to cohorting uh, and semestering for September. Uh, in fact, we've been in discussions with Toronto District School Board, who announced yesterday the more adapted quad semester model that they're implementing for September. We expect other school boards in the GTHA to follow suit or use a similar model, which we support. But let's be clear. The approval of that plan is always predicated on the Chief Medical Officer of Health's office giving us the green light. It's not for the minister or the ministry to decide. It's up to our public health leaders at the Chief Medical Officer of Health table. They have given that green light, and we are very grateful for that because our commitment as a government is to get students back in a more normal and stable learning environment, which includes uh, being in class for high school kids all day. That includes uh, obviously, the reinstatement of clubs and sports and physical education, which we think is consequential. So all of these positive pr um, progress we're making in Ontario with respect to... We got a honk. Uh, well, with respect to... Uh, with respect to... Um, uh, with respect to increasing vaccine rates and decreasing case uh, counts in communities, very promising part of our broader vision to restore a more normal September. Our, we are firmly committed to do that. We put a $1.6 billion investment in place to achieve a safe return to school, a in-person full-time return to school, and we're going to continue to encourage individuals 12 and up to get a vaccine should they want one. As of today, we're at roughly 50% of children uh, that age bracket have received their first dose. And remember, we have a plan in this province to get all education staff and all students who are eligible and who want one double dosed by August ahead of September. And we're very pleased of that plan because I think it's your point, it's going to create the more normal experience students want. Follow up. Thank you. And when is the ministry going to release its plans for the fall? I mean, sure. something more specific than what you've already released? Absolutely. I mean, Quebec has already put out a plan saying no masks, no cohorting, and I think BC is putting it out today. So uh, what is the holdup here in Ontario? Uh, well, I mean, uh, specifically, we put out a plan well ahead of BC in the context of learning recovery about roughly a month ago. BC just announced theirs today about $25 million. Ours is around $85.5 million, comprehensive with a focus on reading and math, lifting those scores up given the, you know, the gaps that have emerged uh, around the world for young people in Ontario. Um, we have also committed, uh, when we announced the grant for student needs, that's the funding vehicle for school boards, where we increased that funding by over $550 million year over year. We announced the learning recovery plan of which represents an $85.5 million investment and we announced for September a $1.6 billion COVID specific resources. Unlike last year and contrary to the assertions by you know uh, by the, the leader of the Liberal Party, I mean is entirely funded by this province by provincial dollars. So we are very much uh, ahead in that respect. Now, with respect to the final guidance, I've always said the Chief Medical Officer of Health in July is going to make an assessment of our COVID uh, vaccine rates for students and staff, as well as the broader public health indicators, where the COVID case numbers are and the trajectory we're on. That was the plan for last year. It's what we're doing this year. Yesterday, I had the pleasure of speaking with both Dr. Moore, the outgoing, pardon me, Dr. Williams, the outgoing Chief Medical Officer of Health, and Dr. Moore, the incoming Chief Medical Officer of Health to reaffirm that timeline and they believe in July we'll be able to provide that final guidance with the aim of a more normal, uh, more positive and more interactive school experience for children that is fully in class where we believe children belong. Next question. Thanks. Next question from Mariam Adahia at Radio Canada. Please go ahead. Hello Minister Lecce. 
Um, Radio Canada has obtained the report on the shortage of teachers in the French language education system in Ontario, where you've been speaking on, but you've never made it public, even though it was finished by January. Are you going to apply all 37 recommendations, such as hiring more than 500 certified French teachers annually as soon as this year? Also not having to repay loans uh, for those entering the French language education, not having to pass the math test. Are you are you going to apply those 37 recommendations? Yeah, so we, uh, in fact, um, announced the, our plan and strategy today. Uh, we will, of course, be, it should be or will be in short order. The report will be public on our website for everyone to see in full transparency. We're moving forward on the vast majority, 32 of those recommendations, an over $10.5 million investment. In the Ministry of Education, the only exception, recommendation not uh, implemented today is the request to not have new French language educators take the math proficiency test. We have taken a position in this province for all new educators in Ontario to pass a grade nine standard standard uh, of math proficiency because uh, respectfully when we came to power we, we made a commitment to the people of this province we were going to lift up math scores after years of regression uh, at, at best stagnation or in many cases a decline in math scores I mean grade 6 EQAO math students the majority failed to meet the provincial math standard. Unacceptable. And we made a commitment to improve it. It's why last week I announced a new grade nine math strategy with a real emphasis on financial literacy, coding, and computational skills. It's why last June I announced the new grade one to eight math curriculum that modernizes uh, our curriculum and aligns it with the labor market needs and the job and life skills young people need. So we're focused on that math test, uh, but I will turn it over to the parliamentary assistant to speak a bit more about uh, the steps we're taking to improve French language recruitment and retention. Thank you very much uh, for the question. As the minister spoke about cette stratégie aujourd'hui que c'était annoncé, propose de changer beaucoup de choses pour promouvoir la rétention uh, et l'obtention des diplômes uh, pour les enseignants en français. Um, par ailleurs, le ministère des Collèges et de l'Université et le ministère de l'Éducation assoupliront les stages en enseignement de, en travail avec l'ordre afin de modifier les règlements en vue d'offrir une expérience pratique et supervisée en dehors de la spécialité de l'enseignement ou de l'enseignant et de permettre la tenue de stage lorsque la matière ou le cycle de l'enseignant ou de l'enseignant ne, ne propose pas. La liste des personnes pouvant superviser et évaluer les candidats uh, et candidates uh, 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 au ministère de, des collèges et universités et le ministère de l'éducation propose également de faciliter l'accès au programme de formation à l'enseignant en langue française du français, langue seconde en actualisé la procédure d'admission au programme de formation à l'enseignement. Il y a plus de 30 recommandations qui ont été acceptées par le ministre de l'Éducation, qui travaillent avec euh, le, le ministre euh, des Collèges et de euh, l'Université euh, pour promouvoir la rétention et la promotion de cette option euh, pour beaucoup de personnes, parce qu'il y a des bons carrières dans l'éducation avec euh, une opportunité pour des personnes qui veulent être un enseignant ou enseignante en français euh, de, de réussir ici en Ontario. Merci. And for my follow-up question, if I um, could ask Minister Lecce, um, so are you going to start as of this year hiring more than 500 certified French teachers annually as it's requested by the authors of uh, the group? We are going to be expanding uh, access to French language education programming with the aim of, yes, recruiting and retaining more teachers to hire them. Because currently we have, you know, I believe in around 900 French language, the shortage between the French um, second language and French language programming. Uh, if I recall, the numbers were roughly 450 for French language education and the uh, about 350 for FSL. So there is a gap today. Our plan is to meet that gap with this plan, a comprehensive whole of government multi-ministry plan that works on, uh, on recruiting the best educators from the international Francophonie into this province. The second step is to provide domestic capacity with under Minister Mando's leadership to encourage more students 
to pursue the faculty and the bachelors of education to become a French language teacher and working in conjunction with the Minister of Francophonie and others, reducing the barriers, improving the uh, cultural supports to integrate educators within our system. And obviously, we're going to continue to provide incentives for them to do that as per the plan we've announced. Today. So yes, we do see more hiring, but step one is getting more eligible individuals um, before our school boards who really are desperate for more French language educators. And, and I think I should just take a moment. The work of our French language education system, who has seen double digit growth over the past years, that is not necessarily because the population is exploding a French language in Ontario. It's because the value proposition they have created for FSL and French language education. Every single year, there are more parents enrolling and wanting to send their kids here because the system is strong, the performance is strong, and we're very proud of the work they do. So I want to express my gratitude to your educators, to your administrators for the work. And obviously, our hope is this plan will help reduce that shortage and allow more people from English and French backgrounds to enter into these schools. We'll go to the next question, and this will be the last question. Next question comes from Rudy Chabanis at TFO. Please go ahead. Good afternoon. Uh, my question is for Minister Leche. Um, there are uh, 37 recommendations uh, in uh, this report. Mm -hmm. uh, why uh, is the government not applying them all? Well, we have committed ourselves to undertaking 32 of those recommendations with a $10.5 million investment, a multi-ministry solution for the first time after a patchwork approach under the former government. And respectfully, in 2015 or 14, 15, in and around that period, where the former government decided to change the eligibility to become a teacher, uh, expanding it to the two-year program, that had a, a detrimental impact on the amount of students enrolling, a roughly 50% reduction, in fact, of qualified educators. That's a, and that has helped, that has rather, that has helped create this challenge we're in today. So we've adopted the overwhelming majority of them in the Ministry of Education, all but one. And the one is a math proficiency test, which we believe every new educator in this province must meet in order to um, meet the math standards we seek, which is the highest performing math jurisdiction, a STEM global leader in STEM education. We believe in part working on a new curriculum will help, more math tutoring, a four-year $200 million strategy, which we have already announced, $40 million is flowing this year alone. But also in part, it's about ensuring that the educators, as the research has suggested, uh, can help improve the ability of children to learn, retain, and to apply that mathematical skills in their classroom if they have that proficiency themselves, which is something we support. Uh, I'll turn it over to the, the Minister of Colleges and Universities and uh, the Parliamentary System if they have anything further to add from their perspective. Mr. Lecce, there is a shortage <coughs> of more than... Uh, uh, a shortage more for uh, more than uh, 500 French speaking teachers do you commit to solving the problem in four years four years Thank you for the question. Just Minister Romano, I'm just going to uh, fill a small gap from the last question you just uh, you just posed. So 32 out of the 37 recommendations are being implemented. The five that are not being implemented, uh, in addition to what Minister Lecce advised uh, in his, his, most, uh, his last response, the five that are not being recommended, I want to be clear, couldn't be recommended at this time either. There would uh, be some time sensitivity. There would be uh, additional work that would have to be done to investigate those. And as Minister Lecce has indicated, we are endeavouring to try to fulfil all those uh, recommendations. But just uh, just to be very, very clear and clarify, the five that were not uh, followed through with at this particular time uh, were for no other reason other than more work would need to be done and further further uh, work would need to be done to reflect those. Uh, with respect to the last question you posed, and then I'll turn it back to Minister Lecce, uh, I want to be again very, very clear with respect to the numbers, uh, with respect to the recommendations, what we're trying to accomplish, let's be very, very crystal clear. We know we have a problem, number one. We know we need to train more teachers, French teachers in the province of Ontario. We know we need to do that through other sources other than just local. So we're going into other jurisdictions and we're going to go into some great jurisdiction in the world that we already recruit a number of teachers through and we want to look at how to recruit more of those teachers into our province so that we could train them here locally. With respect to the element of training, we want to make sure we better, we better train our teachers. We want to ensure that we provide them easier access to training facilities which will allow teachers to also train more teachers. 
teachers. So we want to do a much better job in the training department to ensure that we can then retain our francophone educators here in the province of Ontario. Again, I want to speak very clearly about the uh, roughly 900 uh, teachers that we need today. We have 480 students that are presently on pathways to education through some of these micro certification types of courses. We're going to be able to accelerate their accreditation process. That will immediately uh, make a tremendous difference by adding in 480 uh, FSL uh, teachers into the system. Additionally, with respect to the recruiting efforts that we're working on, and I really want to be critical on this because I think this is so, so important for what we've built here and working very closely with Minister Lecce's office when we have our two bilingual teachers colleges, French teachers colleges in the University of Ottawa and in the University uh, at Laurentian University working together with the University de l'Ontario Francais to be able to create better pathways and accreditation opportunities for teachers. This is how we're not only recruiting, we're going to be do better training and we're going to do a better job of retaining French teachers here in the province of Ontario. And I'll turn it over to Minister Lecce just to fill in. Uh, merci. Très vite, c'est... Um, il y a deux différentes choses pour cette stratégie. Uh, à la main, vous avez uh, le recrutement, que c'est absolument très important de promouvoir la connaissance de l'option de pour um, l'éducation en, 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 en français uh, pour des candidats qui veulent être, uh, veulent être uh, des enseignants et enseignants en français. Mais aussi, c'est la rétention. Et c'était l'autre main. C'est um, 25 des enseignants et enseignants qui, uh, qui commencent uh, d'être dans le secteur éducatif en français, uh, quitter le poste ou quitter le secteur éducatif après uh, uh, cinq ans. Et uh, avec, beaucoup, avec beaucoup de différentes um, uh, choses dans cette stratégie, l'intention et la le, 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 le possibilité de rétention est aussi une chose importante. Uh, je connais que le uh, ministre Lecce et le ministre Romano expliquaient uh, l'importance du recrutement, mais uh, l'autre main est aussi la le, le rétention. Et c'était une chose uh, que je pense que uh, cette stratégie promouvra beaucoup follow-up, and this will be the final question. Yeah. That's all, thank you. I think what I just simply would confirm is this is the start. We're going to continue to build upon this strategy, work with Minister Romano, Mulroney, uh, Sam, and the entire government and our partners in French language education to strengthen this. This is step one in a multi-year uh, journey to fix a problem that is national in scope and over a decade long. And I'm very grateful for the partnership of these leaders who have made this their life mission to preserve, protect, and to grow French language education in Ontario. And I'm assuring you with the funding, with the implementation, with the strategy, we will be a national leader in this respect. So thank you. Merci tout le monde.